Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is episode 207 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I want to thank you for stopping by. I've got to be honest, sometimes it's a little surprising to me when I say the episode number 207. I've done this 207 times, and there is no sign of stopping because you all keep listening. In fact, more people listen every week than the week before. The show continues to grow, and that blows me away. I am completely humbled and thankful. So thanks for being here. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about, well, how do I phrase this simply? People's belief that there is only one right way. It drives me crazy. If you want to find any of the other episodes that we've done, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to find the great products we make and ties, links to all the other stuff that we do, martial arts memes and the calendar and all that, that's at whistlekick.com, W-H-I-S-T-L-E-K-I-C-K.com. No punctuation, no spaces, um, and if you look closely, we never even capitalize Whistlekick because there is humility even in our company name. All right, today's episode, this is one that I've been struggling to find a way to express of late. I have been trying to find the right form to convey this, and... I might get a little heated. I am going to try not to swear. If I do, you'll hear that I cut it out because we don't swear on this show, at least not usually. I would if I could because it makes me angry. It makes me really angry when I see this stuff. If you haven't noticed before, if you've been listening to the show for a little while, I absolutely love martial arts. I love what martial arts has done for me and for so many others. And one of the things that Whistlekick is founded on is the belief that martial arts should play a bigger role in the world. That martial arts does so much wonderful stuff for people as individuals that the world would be a better place if everyone was training. Even if people trained just for six to 12 months of their lives. If everyone trained, I believe the world would be a better place. And that's a belief that most of our guests, when I've asked them that question, have agreed, yes, the world would be better if we were all training, or at least trained for a little while. And yet, the biggest issues, the things that hold us back from growing as a martial arts realm, because I don't quite like the word community for this, it's us. We're holding it back. We're the culprits. And we've talked about this on other episodes. Uh, for example, how to help people choose the right martial arts school and, and things like that. I'm part of a number of Facebook groups and, and I get tagged in things and people shoot me stuff. And I have conversations with people at competitions, at seminars. And one of the things that is just driving me nuts lately and continues to drive me crazier and crazier are these keyboard warriors, these individuals who sit there and say that what other people are is other people are doing is wrong and that there's only one right way, and it's their way. How arrogant can you be? These people actually believe that. There is no right way. Now, I'm not going to stop the episode there, because you deserve an explanation. Maybe you're not quite on board with what I'm saying. When I say there's no right way, here's what I mean. If I value self-defense skills, if that's the reason that I come to martial arts, it's the most important aspect of my training, then yes, there is some training styles, there are some methodologies that are better at supporting that value. If I value self-defense and I am training in a soft Tai Chi style as the way Tai Chi is traditionally taught in the United States that's probably not the best choice. But by the same token, if I value, say, physical conditioning, personal development, getting out of the house to spend some time with my friends, then that Tai Chi might be the best option for me, especially when I consider the options in my geographical area, the way it fits into my life, the financial implications. For someone to say that what this person is doing is not martial arts, or what this person is doing is, excuse me, is wrong. That's such utter BS. It's so selfish. And what I think a lot of people forget is that 
these conversations are not within boundaries. They leak out. They create this, my martial art is better than your martial art, which has become such a cliche that it is in martial arts movies. It's kind of, it's one of the, the cliche plots to old kung fu movies. My master is better than your master. That crap, I hate it. And now here we are, it's 2017, and we still do this stuff. Why? How many people out there would love to be full-time martial arts instructors, but look around and complain that there aren't enough people that are interested in martial arts? This is one of the repercussions. This is the consequence of all of our infighting, all of our commentary that you just did that wrong. This isn't right. Right and wrong can only be applied when we talk about values. Values are not the same for everyone. I live out in the woods because I value privacy and quiet and nature and animals. You might live in the middle of New York City. Does that mean you're right for living there and I'm wrong for living here or vice versa? No. I've made the decision that is right for me. You've made the decision that is right for you. Martial arts is the same damn thing. I train in the way that works for me. You train in the way that works for you, hopefully. Somebody else, hopefully, is training in the way that works best for them. Every martial arts argument I see online, the majority I, I hear in person, it comes down to people having a difference in value, and they don't discuss it. Let's start giving people the benefit of the doubt. Let's assume People are training for the right reasons, the reasons that work for them, the reasons that make them better at something. Stop assuming that the things you were taught were taught to everyone. Guess what? If you do a form one way and another school does the same form differently, even if it's the same style, even if both instructors learn that form from the same teacher, one of them is not wrong. The right and the wrong when it comes to the application of technique or the presentation of forms, it's, it's a myth. It does not exist. Now, maybe within your school, your instructor says this is the correct way to do something because that is the value that they have ascribed to it. They have decided this is the version of the form that we do in this school. And if you value training there, then you should do that. But that does not mean that the school, the next town over, even if they're in the same martial arts system, if they're doing it a little bit differently, that doesn't make it wrong. It makes it different. And our differences need to stop being held up as falsehoods and with criticism and instead celebrated. Because it, it's, it's the differences that allow us to grow as martial artists, and compare notes and become better. If you've attended a martial arts seminar where you know a bunch of different people from different styles are training these kind of mixed events, which frankly are my favorite events, that's where so much growth happens. I love seeing instructors, and admittedly not all of them do this, you know, two or three of them go off in a corner and they're comparing notes. Well, this is how we do this. Well, this is how we do this. You know, it doesn't turn into an argument. But one of them may come back and say, I like that. I'm going to adjust what I'm doing in this way because that seems to work better for me. Does that mean what they were doing all this time was wrong? No. Because right and wrong are the absolute ends of a spectrum where nothing in martial arts really exists. We have this gray area. And that's where we all are. We're trying to move as close to that right end for us as possible. But you can only do that once you've decided on what is valuable to you so it can guide your training. Martial arts has always evolved. It's going to continue to evolve. It will grow and change and morph 
because it's alive. This thing that we do, that we love so much, this is not something that just exists on paper. This is why learning martial arts from a book is so hard, because it can't be contained in that way. There's a lot more to it than the punches and the kicks and the blocks and, you know, set patterns of repetition and how we spar and weapons. There's a spirit to it. And in many styles, in many schools, that's discussed. Whether that's Budo or, or Bushido, I apologize, I don't know the names for the things outside of Japanese and karate, but those spiritual aspects, not spiritual as in religion, but spiritual as in the, the concepts, the things we do as martial arts have spirit. There is an element in there. And if you've been training a long time, you know what I'm talking about. It's bigger than you and me and honestly, everyone that is currently doing martial arts and ever has. Because it exists outside of that. And it will continue to grow and evolve for that reason. If you refuse to accept that, if you feel like what you've learned is the pinnacle of martial arts, well, then you're done training. What's the point? Why? Go go ahead, put your back black belt in the closet, because I'm sure you're a black belt. I'm sure you're a ninth or a tenth degree. Maybe you started your own style and you're a twelfth degree black belt, and you know everything. Okay, cool. I have no desire to to even have a conversation with you. If you're the type that's going to referee at a, a tournament and you're going to score a forms competitor lower because they did the form differently than you were taught, which used to happen to me, and I, had I not been a, a teenager, I would have gone off because I had people tell me this. You're part of the problem. Assuming that your way is the only way is one of the most arrogant things I can imagine. I hate it. It makes me angry. It makes me livid. If you already know everything, then, you know, why would you be listening to this show? Go away. No, you will never be a guest. I will not give attention to the arrogant fools that hold back this thing that I love so much. I owe my life to the martial arts, and so do many, many others in various ways, whether that is their biological life or what has guided them through their life. I'm the latter. You don't deserve to be called a martial artist. Because a martial artist loves the martial arts. They don't just do it. And someone that loves something will help foster its growth. To say that your way is the only way, that doesn't foster any growth for you or for anyone else. Martial arts is alive. Yes, it really is. And it is our responsibility as martial artists to nurture it, to care for it. And for all the people that are training and to preserve the integrity of it for the people that will train in the future. That doesn't mean that it can't evolve, it can't grow. I think a lot of us engaged in Asian martial arts can take a really hard lesson from the historical European martial arts stuff going on right now. It died out because weaponry changed. But now there's a whole community digging back into it. They're enjoying that exploration, that training. Well, the same will happen with some of the things that we do now. It is entirely possible that in 200 years that karate or taekwondo has fallen away and it's practiced by a small group and maybe it'll it'll expand out again and then it'll contract because all arts do if we look at any artistic pursuit whether it's painting or styles of music they have their heyday and then they fade and then sometimes they come back it doesn't matter worry about how you can make yourself better if you have students or peers how can you make them better? Because by extension, you're helping the martial arts get better. And you're setting up this thing that we love. Because I'm going to assume now that about 15 minutes in, you love this stuff. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear me complaining about it this long. If you love this stuff, 
Let's help it survive for the next generation. And if you have that much time to tear down other people, then you have time to go back and train more. And wouldn't that be time better spent? If you can't contain your judgment, keep it private. Worry about you. I want to thank you for listening today. I want to thank you for indulging me as I got this out. There have been a couple days lately where I've just been fuming at my keyboard as I see people tearing other people down. And some of you may see me in those groups because I am the first person to stand up and say, there is no right way. We have to assume the best of each other. We have to assume that if someone does something differently, something that seems offensive to you, assume that they weren't taught that that's wrong. Maybe instead of judging them, condemning them for their actions, you can have a conversation with them. Maybe you'll learn something. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.